My name is Luke Choice, founder of Velvet Spectrum, a 3D design and animation studio I run with my wife Morgan here in Astoria, Oregon. I'm excited to be a judge in this year's MSI Creator Awards 2021 in the graphic design category. In celebration of this year's awards, I've created this artwork using the Creator Z16 laptop from MSI. I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show a few of my tips and tricks that I like to use in my creative process. So let's take a look. So here we have our artwork and you know, it was inspired by the idea of tech meets aesthetic, which, you know, is, is a pretty constant thought, you know, in my process of using such technical tools to create such beautiful and fluid, uh, naturally inspired shapes. Uh, so I wanted to go into this artwork and show you how I went about creating, you know, a few cool effects and creating different forms using some fluid lines and, you know, eventually using materials to complement it and retouch it. So how about we dive into um, showing you how I went about creating some of these brush strokes and the, the, uh, the gritty textures applied to those. So let's dive in. I'm just going to actually show you how I like to do things nice and smooth using straight lines. So let's say, starting with linear and we just kind of create almost a lightning bolt but a beautiful feature i always like using is the b-spline so it automatically adjusts those points to be smooth from each other um, and it just sort of takes out a lot of the guesswork with some of those handles uh, the vector handles that we're all used to. So you can start to move that back and forward in the Z space and get some really nice variation in depth. So I feel like one thing that is sort of consistent across my portfolio is a, you know, a dedication to fluid line work and just and finding new ways to bring that to life. So if we use our loft spline here, and we drop our spline in there, our loft nerve, I should say, and we drop our spline in, there's nothing shows up. But just like building boats, you need pieces to join together. So they become our lofted space. And we can start to maneuver that to have a little bit more of a nice overlap. And if we come into our display and just sort of check with the lines, We'll see how much of our subdivision here is needing to be amped up. So if we just come in here and just increase by tens till we get to a nice smooth surface. And to create a nice brush material without doing much work at all, come into our materials palette. And if we add just a new standard material, if we double click that, and then come into our color. And if we go to noise, nice, quick, easy, built-in procedural textures. And there's a lot you can do with them. Um, so you can already start to see that it gives you a nice overlapping effect. And I'm just going to turn off the work plane so we can see it a bit clearer there. Um, but then we'll just close this and I'll show you just, you know, we can start to get some really nice angles if we shorten that we can overlap it again so you just create a multitude of angles and you know if you duplicate these and control drag we'll just create a copy of that and we can rotate those and then we've got you know completely usable piece from another angle um, but if we come in here again and if you actually preview render it should be wrong yeah so if we click on that just a way to fix that is hit UV 2D and it's going to give you more of a representation of what you're seeing in your editor uh, and if you want to if you're worried about this sort of anti-aliasing you, know, you can just come up and just quickly adjust that and go to best and you'll notice that's adjusted there. So another way to level this up is to bring an alpha channel to this texture and you can copy 
this texture we've already used and in our alpha channel we can drop in that same texture by pasting it and now wherever the black was has removed it so you can actually start to see where the overlap occurs and you can then vary that up even by just changing a seed level and then you can actually get some of the black but we can change that to see a little bit easier oh, no that's the alpha the uh, color one has to change so now you can start to see so you can do lots of different things with a few tools here and the beauty of the bee spline um, an actual tip would be to let's delete that and actually create an instance of that spline so it's a duplicate to that but if I adjust the one spline so if I select all to see where my points are I only have to move one point because my spline is going to move because of the master there so you're always trying to think of the least amount of movements to keep things nice and tidy in 3D so that's nice and handy and let's move on to a, another tool okay cool so we're back in the artwork and now I'm thinking that we can run through what this big sort of tubular brush stroke 3d stroke that um you know as a technique i figured out probably you know several years ago now um a lot of my work sort of comes from doing typography and those line work textures and styles transcend into more abstract work that i still love enjoy doing um you know I, I started out doing a lot of collage work so i see this is very similar just using my own you know textural assets so i'm going to show you how to do this if we come back in here so we can delete that previous file or actually we can leave that and we're going to use just that spline same spline and we're going to do something completely different with it so this is a landscape that you can bring in and it has tons of parameters that you can play with endlessly so you can reduce the subdivision so it's much more low polygon you can bring up the sea level and you know, to create more mountainous zones and i thought that one day i needed something to use on this deformer called a spline wrap so if i actually create that as a child of the landscape I want to dictate where this landscape is going to go so by pulling this spline into this field here it's going to dictate where that landscape goes which is quite a mess right now but using my scale tool I'm just going to bring it down and I'm going to turn off the line so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on so it's not great but what we can do is we can turn it spherical and that's going to give us something different to work with so we can see now here that by turning that spherical it's going to stretch that along the surface but we're going to need more segments to work with so if we just increase that and then the spline wrap deformer gives us a lot of tools to play with um, yeah, it is clunky right now, but all we have to do is drop in this subdivision surface here and that's going to smooth a lot of that out. But the fun thing to do with this is to come down within the parameters of the spline wrap and we have these size modifiers and we get to rotation, but you can see here just using that, we automatically start to taper that. and if we can just even shrink the length of our spline wrap 
we can always offset if you're looking to do the animation with this so just bearing that in mind and it also helps you to move it along the path in case there is a nicer section of the spline you've created that you want to work with um, but we don't really want that to be shrunk so much um, but we can come into rotation which is always fun and you can start to twist and if you just hold down control you can start to dictate where those rotations occur and you create some really cool animation sequences here so again and then the fun thing is because if you copy this so control c control v this is a second one if we just change the seed value then you're going to have different options of how you can start to see and if you shrink it down let's create some quick materials just to see the differentiation happening so you can start to see the difference in the two so then why I like working with these landscapes is that you can come into these parameters and just play around with how they intersect and how the crevices start to show through the other colors. And you can always offset, you know, you can do a bunch of different things. So I think that the idea of um, you know, contrasting materials with, uh, you know, this sort of fluid brush strokes, but really tying things together with color. Um, so I'm going to show you how to create this sort of, uh, crystallized effect here, just, which is like an output of efforts made earlier with some of the other stuff. So if we even, again, with our spline, let me go quick for you. So we can go. Say that. And let's turn that to the baseline again. And in the volume builder, you can drop volume builder and then a volume mesher. And that starts to give us a form. And, you know, it was always sweep nose back in the day trying to do typography. So and I've always been a fan of the volume mesher since it's been introduced. And, I used to try and get around with meta balls and things like that. So this is really handy now. And if we go into our volume builder and in order to make this thicker, we can go through and increase our density firstly, which is going to make it a lot tighter of a shape. Um, and then we can start to increase the radius here. And subsequently you can actually shrink down I get a bit more going on and then it's really handy and here is the options we can dilate in a road and it could just add you know extra surface area again that way and then we can fix that by adding a smooth and you know you can play with how much you want to add there but then you've got a nice little piece of geometry that you can work with and do different techniques. So let's create a current state to object. So that's going to make that an editable piece now. Um, so there's our line work. But then I always like just sort of interchanging different pieces of uh, C4D to create new effects. So We'll turn this off so you get a better idea. And with our polygon reduction, we're just going to keep reducing down. And if we go to our phone tag and basically zero out the angle of smoothing, as I like to think of it, you start to get a sense here of what's taking place. So then again, you know, you just kind of like current state to object. And then it spits out a nice little crystallized, but smooth, 
kind of piece. Um, and then you can always duplicate that. And then I think it's always fun to add a nice little atom array. And that gives you a nice cage for the uh, piece to sit in and it allows you to sort of add some different materials that interact with each other. Cool, so let's take another look at another piece of the puzzle and see what else we can make for you. Cool, so I wanted to approach the golden ratio design in you know, a bit more of a stylized galaxy Milky Way vibe up here. So I'm going to take you through how I went about that. And let's start with C4D again. And we're going to go into, we can actually just do this in perspective view. So I'm going to bring in this helix. And it's actually a lot of fun because it has a lot of different parameters. But we can effectively shrink down that start radius and we start to have something that's getting there but if we increase the end angle we're going to get a lot more rotation in that space and then we can always bring the height down but i like to leave it offset a little bit just to give us some more depth and then what we're going to do is use that as a path to clone our spheres. So we're just going to shrink that down. And we're going to go to our MoGraph. And we're going to bring in a cloner. We want to clone the sphere. Along in this mode, we're going to go to Object, which will also mean this spline here. And if we drop that in there, then that's where our spheres are going to go. So obviously, we want to increase the amount that's happening here. So if we go into our count and we just add that up, but it's creating, you know, quite a, you know, rigid pattern there. So we want to actually disrupt that a little bit and create a little bit of variation. So if we go in here again, we've got a lot of powerful effectors to our MoGraph modes there. And so we bring, I like to use a random form of things like this. So by default, it's starting to randomly move our assets 50 centimeters, but I think we just turn that off for now. And if we go to scale and I just check these, so then it's just the one we have to focus on, which will randomly decrease. What we can do is we can turn the position back on, but we'll just zero out the values for now. And we can add a little step there and start to create a little bit more variation and then you can always raise this count some more if you want to get some various colors in all you got to do is just make some quick let's do three materials one And then we can just make some duplicates in there. There you go. So then we can even, with that now, we can even open up that centerpiece. Um, there's actually a lot of power here, so you can. options really and you can always increase that but I think you start to lose the idea but yeah so let's jump into another technique and we'll see how we go so one last tip before I get into showing you a little bit more behind the scenes of the render um, I'm just gonna quickly show you how I came up with this um, just to make it a little bit easier if you've ever wanted to create something like that. So what I actually use is this formula spline. And if you come into front view and you come over to the T max and you can just add that to 11. We'll zoom out 
and we just need to increase our samples to smooth this out. So we get that up to about 150, and then if we make that editable, we can then grab our scale tool and bring that down. So it's a nice piece of wavy lasagna. And then you can always put that inside a sweet nerve, but you can make the profile a square. So if we shrink that down and then bring down that width and then we turn on the rounding, it's going to give us a nice smooth edge. So if we can even reduce that down. Cool. So that's a last little tip there for you. Um, and now I'm going to get in and show you a little bit more about the render settings I use for this um, testing out the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 that's inside this MSI laptop in the uh, 11th gen Intel processor. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been really fast and you know, I'm always looking to work on the move. So it's been a really fun uh, challenge to test this out. So let's piece this together and see you in the render settings. Now we're in the final comp of um, all the pieces we created separately, I bring together and and rearrange and play around with until I feel like there's a nice complementary balance happening with its, whether it's colors or uh, materials or forms. So um, I, can, I can show you a little bit more about how I went about setting up the lighting uh, to render. So I used standard render, which was actually, um, it gives a really nice sort of gaming feel when you bring in a physical sky. Um, so bringing it in from here, just drop that in. So I'm just going to turn that on, give you a little sense of how it changes the scene. But um, if we want to start previewing how it's coming together, we can turn on the interactive render region. And you have a little play button here that's going to toggle your resolution. So if you want a faster response, you can obviously shrink down the size of your preview render and move that down. So it just gives you a sense of uh, where the light's coming from. You can always amp that up to get a better re representation of how it actually looks. So we can turn that off for now. I'm just going to start bringing in the light source that helps sort of fill the whole scene. Um, which is this infinite light. So that coming in here. And then I used a couple of separate lights to help bring a little bit of extra um, reflection and atmosphere to the scene. So by positioning them, you know, we get some nice uh, specular highlights coming through on these, um, you know, nice textures happening there. And then I even just made this one a little pink light. So it gives a little bit more of a, a surreal feel to the whole scene. Um, and then some other tricks with materials, just using standard materials even. Um, I always like to go in and actually make the, the color of the specular um, either something complementary uh, in the same, uh, the same family of color there. So it gives a little bit more of that hyper real um, finish where you can see that happening in the specular. So you can also see that in the blue. Um, I went with a blue material, but in the reflectance, I've added actually a pink highlight to give it that sort of pink um, reflection, which is, you know, a nice little effect with, um, helps also tie together the whole color scheme of the, the work itself. Um, so yeah, I simply just went into my settings and turned on, uh, within the effects, the global illumination. Um, so it's already up here uh, in the ambient occlusion, which adds some, you know, nice realistic shadows to crevices and where objects will meet. So from there, we're ready to uh, make sure we set up an alpha channel 
that'll allow us to section off our background, uh, which will help with some final retouching in Photoshop. Okay, so with our render complete, we're in Photoshop now. Uh, and because we saved our file out with an alpha channel, uh, if we hold down control click, we can select our background, which allows us to separate it and give us a little bit more opportunity to add in some cool atmospheric highlights and glows. Um, so now if I delete that, turn the background off, you can see that the transparent background is there. Um, and if we just go ahead and add in a solid color, um, just make it gray for now, or make it something complementary from the colors, and then turn it down just a little bit. And then if we add a new layer on top, I usually like to just grab my brush, make it quite large, and select another color, and just go in. And it's always nice to just drop down the opacity. And you can always even just shift that down so we see a little bit more transparency. Um, and then with this layer here now, if we add the layer above and then add a clipping mask so it just affects that layer there, we can then grab our brush again. I just prefer to select colors from in the same artwork because it just seems to allow everything to work a little bit more harmoniously. So if we do that, and I always just like turn it to overlay, and then I just bring that down to about 20 or 30%. And then once that's set in stone, I just go through and I start selecting colors from it within their environment and just add touches of highlights here and there. And then I usually like to add a bit more of a shaded vignette. So if we zoom out, get a brush. And then I think if we pick something more in the darker tones of this artwork, and on that empty new layer, we just increase the brush. And just sort of create a shade there. And then turn that to overlay as well, and then bring that down. Just subtle differences always help. So even just a new layer again, but this time we bring it right down and grab a white and just amplify up some of these highlights. And then again, we just turn that opacity down. But there we have it. Thanks so much for joining me as I took you through some of my creative process using the Creator Z16 laptop from MSI in celebration of this year's MSI Creator Awards 2021. I highly encourage you to get your entries in on time. I can't wait to see what everyone submits. Good luck and all the best.